We're going to cover some information on discrete optimization with branch and bound algorithms. A couple different versions of discrete variables that we can have are binary, meaning that you can have 0 or 1, it can be false or true. Uh, you can have integer as well. Okay, so 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0, 2, 5, 10, for example, all integer values. <clears throat> you can have just general discrete values as well. Let's say you could have a pump that's a half horsepower, a one horsepower, or a two horsepower pump. Okay, so those will all be discrete um, decisions that we'd have to choose from. You could also have sets, for example, London, New York, Boston, Tokyo, for example, like a traveling salesman problem in different locations that you'd want to visit. Okay, so we have um, examples of things that might be discrete design or optimization variables like uh, motor sizes, pump sizes, valves, fasteners, pipes, etc. Okay, so we change our continuous optimization problem into the discrete form just with the addition of these additional discrete variables z. Uh, so we are minimizing an objective function subject to some equality or inequality constraints. And we have normally just these continuous x variables. So we're just going to add uh, these integer variables as uh, or discrete variables as well. Okay, so the first um, approach for this is to just, uh, you could evaluate all the different possible combinations of discrete variables. And so one example is, let's say you have a sprinkler system that can have one of five sizes of pipe and one of three sizes of pump and then one of ten types of sprinkler heads. Okay, so how many combinations are possible? We just multiply all the number of combinations together. We have 150 possible combinations of a uh, single sprinkler system. Now, let's take example two. So there are 10 standard sprinkler heads <coughs> that can be chosen um, for a golf course. If we choose uh, different uh, 25 sprinkler heads in the design, how many are going to be possible? So that's going to be 10 to the 25th or greater than the number of grains of sand on the earth. Okay, so a lot of different combinations. So if we do an exhaustive search for this one, it's going to be pretty easy, 150 possible combinations. But if we do an exhaustive search for this one, then uh, we might be computing for a while. Okay, that's a lot of different combinations. So we want to be smart, <clears throat> smart about how we uh, do this search and find an optimal solution. And that's part of what branch and bound is going to be about. Okay, so we have sampling versus gradient technique. Sampling is just where you guess and check. Gradient is where you might uh, do a relaxation, like uh, assume for a little bit that you have a continuous, uh, continuous variables versus discrete, and then use gradients to tell you where to look next. Okay, so uh, we want to try to minimize a function, so we're going to look for uh, something that will give us a lower objective function. And so these are going to be much faster um, than these other approaches. So exhaustive search would be the kind of the naive approach. Uh, you have something like simulated annealing or genetic algorithms um, that you could use as well. Uh, branch and bound, outer approximation, those are going to be gradient methods. Um, this is outer approximation is where we solve uh, successive MILP problems. And branch and bound is where we're going to solve successive nonlinear programming problems. Or if you have a, um, <clears throat> if this is a mixed integer linear programming problem to start with, then you might solve successive linear programs there. Okay, so that's a uh, difference between sampling versus gradient-based methods. We're going to particularly cover branch and bound, but I want to give just an overview of some of these other approaches as well. And just as an example, we're going to use um, example of playing golf on an aircraft carrier. So let's say you've converted an aircraft carrier over to a golf course. Um, <clears throat> let's say you have that kind of money, you have your clubhouse here, and uh, you know that uh, tee off is right up here. Okay, and so we want to have uh, stay within the feasible boundary. Okay, so here is uh, infeasible. If we, if we guess something outside of this, then we have to start over. Okay, who um, won't give us a good uh, next point to, to go off of. We want to try to find the minimum value. And in this case, this is going to be the 
optimal location. That's the uh, the hole for the golf course, okay? The, the destination, the optimal value. Um, and so we're gonna tee off just by maybe we can't quite see all the way to the um, to the flag down there. So we're just gonna look around ourselves and look for what's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the steepest descent or uh, we take a quadratic approximation and we, and we guess uh, where our next solution might be. Okay, so right here, and then we guess again, okay, using a gradient-based method, and then guess again until we arrive at this, this optimal, um, optimal value. But now let's uh, assume that we have, uh, that we're gonna have uh, discrete constraints as well. Okay, so some of our variables are gonna be discrete. So um, we're only going to accept solutions that are at the intersection of these discrete options. Okay, so we gotta find the best location given the fact that now our variables are discrete and not continuous. Okay, so we can do an exhaustive search. That's the very first approach. And that's, um, you know, all the places where the white and black lines intersect. Okay, and so that'd be like placing a golf ball at each grid location and evaluating the elevation, figuring out which one's the lowest. Okay, then the simulated annealing, if we took that approach, it's kind of like dropping balls from a helicopter. And as, they, as they're gonna bounce, um, and they're going to kind of settle into uh, different discrete locations, uh, then we evaluate the best ones um, after we've allowed our temperature to decrease the random variability of these uh, of these uh, uh, guesses uh, is going to settle in on on local minimum values. Okay, genetic algorithm is another one. We're not going to cover uh, simulated annealing or genetic algorithms in much detail, but this would be kind of like placing gerbils at some locations, and then you eliminate the higher elevation gerbils with this hawk. Okay, the hawk that goes down, it's able to get the gerbils that are at higher elevations. We're gonna to try to find a minimum value um, and let these uh, gerbils go through many generations until you look and see where the, the minimum elevation gerbils are located, okay? So that would be um, like a genetic algorithm. Okay, now in branch and bound, that's kind of like planting a tree at uh, the relaxed solution. So this might be our hole on the golf course where that is the uh, optimal relaxed or non-integer solution. And then we're gonna start branching. We're gonna start branching to these uh, integer values and start um, uh, start from that relaxed optimal solution. So it'd be kind of like placing this tree there, the apples drop, branch and drop. And then we're going to prune this tree and successively get to our optimal solution. Okay, so let's go over a more mathematical <laughs> expression of how how this works. So we have, um, and, th and this is still a qu uh, qualitative uh, description right here. But let's say we have a, a level one. We just have one variable that's discrete. Okay, so we have three levels or three variables that we're going to try to find the the optimal solution of. And and so first of all, we'll just say that we only have. Uh, three options here. Okay, so three discrete options. We're going to evaluate uh, these three, okay, um, at these these values, but then uh, use a continuous relaxation of variable two and variable three. Okay, so that we're going to assume those are, are continuous. <clears throat> we compute an objective function for each of these, and um, Let's say we just uh, we go after the uh, the lowest objective function first. We're going to do a depth first search on our tree, um, and so we come down, okay, and we might evaluate um, a couple different options here, and we find that 57 is going to be our lowest one for our second one. That's now going to be uh, discrete. Okay, and then we evaluate all the different options from there, and we find uh, this one, 58. Um, so what that tells us is this is going to be, this is going to be a discrete solution, and what we can say now is this is going to be an upper bound to our objective function. So what we can do now is once we have this 58, is we can come back here and say, well, this one was 63, 
with uh, the third variable continuous. So we know that this one will not be an optimal solution. And, and we can say that because if we further branch on this one, all of these are going to be greater than or equal to 63. Because as we oppose that additional uh, discrete qualification, that we know those are going to become worse in terms of the objective function. Okay, so we can go ahead and eliminate uh, that one, um, this one as well. Uh, we don't have to branch on this one either, okay, because we found this 58 right here. But this one's 52, so we do need to branch on this one. Okay, so I'm going to go down here, down here, and down here. Here's 58. I can just go ahead and get rid of that one as well. Okay, I know that further branching on that is just going to make it equal to or worse uh, of an objective function. And so I'm going to go down the 55 route as well. Okay, now I might have seen this one. There's a little asterisk here. Um, that means it's infeasible. Okay, so maybe it didn't satisfy some of the constraints. Okay, so now I'm going to evaluate down here. I'm going to find another one that's 59. That's a candidate discrete optimum, but it's greater than the uh, 58. It's right here. And the rest of these are infeasible. So, okay, so I found the optimal solution right here, um, which was 58. And I was able to prune a number of these branches by using the upper bound of this, uh, you know, finding an integer solution and using that as an upper bound. Okay, so branch and bound with continuous relaxations if we can. This is the preferred method. Okay, so if you have integer or binary variables, let's say you have a zero, x has to be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to one. So what we're gonna say with continuous relaxations is that we're gonna let the value of x be something like 0 0.71 as we're searching for a solution doing this branching. Okay, so um, we want to start with the continuous relaxation, so all of the variables are continuous, and find the optimal solution to that. Um, and then we're going to branch on non-integer variables. And uh, the first integer solution that we, uh, that we find is going to be our upper bound. Okay, and so we can start pruning some of the branches off. We, don't, we can be more efficient. And we're going to continue until the gap between the lower, okay, that's going to be the lowest possible objective from the set of non-integer solutions, and the upper bound, the lowest objective from the integer solutions, so until that gap is narrow enough that we say, well, we found an integer solution. It may not be the best one, but it's going to be good enough um, for our tolerances. Okay, so let's look at a branch and bound example problem. So we're going to be minimizing x minus 2.1 squared plus y minus 5.4 squared. Okay, so this is going to be something like x and y. Okay, and then I'm just going to, um, well, let me draw it this way. Okay, I'll draw a third axis here. This is going to be my y. And let's say I'm going to go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.4, and then 1, 2, 2.1, and this is going to be my objective function value, so it's going to be kind of centered right here, and it's just going to be uh, this this three-dimensional bowl, okay, right here, where the objective function is going to get worse as it moves away from that point. And so the optimal solution is going to be x equals 2.1 and y equals 5.4, but we're going to enforce that these have integer, um, these are going to be integer values. Okay, so let's, let's just, this is a pretty trivial problem, but let's go ahead and just work through it so we can see the branch and bound technique in practice. So we're first of all, we're just going to compute a relaxed solution. That's going to give us an objective function of zero. Okay, and there's our relaxed solution, as we mentioned. Then we're going to branch on one of the variables. So let's go ahead and branch on, uh, we can do either x or y first, okay? So let's go ahead and just choose y first. 
And so y was equal to 5.4. And so we're gonna have one of them that's gonna be y is greater than six and y is less than five. Okay, so y greater than six, we're gonna have this solution, x equals 2.1, again, that didn't change, y equals six, and then we have an objective function of 0 0.36. Okay, and then the next one is y equals five, and then objective is um, 0 0.16. So it's important to note that this is not, okay, y equals five. Okay, it's gonna be y less than five, and that'll be important later, not for this problem, but for later problems as we'll see. Okay, and then we have the branch and bound. Um, we're gonna continue now. Um, we have a lower bound now of uh, 0.16, okay, because I took the lesser of, of those two. We don't still don't have an integer solution yet, so we still don't have an upper bound yet. Uh, but let's go ahead and branch on the y and come up with our first integer solution. Okay, so now uh, I branched on the y here. Okay, that was my y branch. Now I'm gonna do my x branch. I'm gonna do my next one. So x is 2.1, so let's do the upper. And then the next one's gonna be less than two, right here with y greater than or equal to six. But here I found my first integer solution. So both of my variables are integers and I have a new upper bound. Okay, 1.17. So there are my bounds right there. And then I compute a gap. If that is within a certain tolerance that I can specify, I might be done at that point. Okay, so I don't have to evaluate other options. If I deem it sufficiently close um, in terms of a kind of a fraction, okay, it's uh, typically the upper minus lower divided by the upper plus the lower. Um, if I'm within a certain tolerance there, then I'd say, well, I'm, I'm close enough to being done. But let's go ahead and continue. Um, so let's do the x is less than two now, and I got a new uh, upper bound there. Um, so here's the bound between the uh, the best, uh, so, so this is the integer solution here. Okay, so that'd be the best integer solution. Um, and then this would be the um, lowest of the relaxed solutions, okay? And that's still uh, 0 0.16. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, this one is uh, integer solution, but it wasn't better. And then this last one is the best integer solution. As so you can see the gap there, um, it made it 0 0.03 worse uh, by uh, enforcing integer, uh, integer constraints. Okay, um, so, uh, all right, so now there's a, uh, an exercise on branch and bound. Let me go ahead and show that to you. If you come to the apmonitor.com website and then go down to uh, take a course, um, and then if you come to the optimization techniques for engineers, and then scroll down to the uh, <clears throat> discrete optimization Okay, this is going to be under discrete op optimization under lecture notes, and uh, we have this branch and bound exercise right here. So if you just go ahead and click on that, you'll see this uh, this sheet that you can download, and also there's a video there that'll take you through that. What I want to do just to conclude this uh, video right here is go through just an, a web-based um, <clears throat> example. So if you just go ahead and select, uh, there's some examples here in MATLAB and Python, but if you go ahead and select just this second one right here, branch and bound with AP Monitor, it's gonna bring up a web interface here. Okay, so here it is, the, um, the web interface. Um, and uh, I've got this general form right here uh, that you can use uh, just with you know a couple example variables and parameters, okay, and equations. And if you solve it, this is this is gonna be the relaxed problem right here, where the x values are uh, continuous, okay, so we have zero, uh, 0 0.5, one, and one, okay, those are my x values, okay. And what I'm gonna do is, um, 
just make those into integer variables now and then solve it again. Um, so to do that, I'll just take my uh, any variable and put int in front of it and then it makes it into an integer um, an integer value and then um, I'm just going to rename um, get my x variables back because I declared those in my equations below okay so I'm just going to make a uh, assign x is equal to this int x now okay and then if I solve it again um, and then I go down I'll see the solution okay so objective value of 8.14 then now you can see that these um, these integer values instead of being at 0 0.5 they're at 1 or at 0 so they're binary variables okay and then you can come down here and see the um, the iteration summary of the APOP solver okay so it took uh, 10 uh, iterations and uh, came up with the best uh, you know a best integer solution um, and it took about uh, those less than 0.1 seconds okay uh, to find that answer and then if you go to view solution results then it'll come up with this um, it'll come up with this right here a table that shows uh, the solution okay with the upper and lower bounds highlighted there. So you have the name, the lower and uh, value, and also upper bound as well. Okay, so a table that shows uh, some of the uh, the values here with the bounds. Okay, so that concludes um, concludes this uh, tutorial then on the branch and bound method. Um, you know, if, uh, so we just to review. We went through, um, you know, some different techniques for solving discrete optimization problems. Um, remember, you can have binary integer, just general discrete or sets, um, and uh, we're just modifying this problem to include some of these integer values. Okay, and there's different ways to solve it. There's genetic algorithms, simulated annealing. Uh, what we really covered here are more of the gradient-based techniques uh, where you use a um, mixed integer, nonlinear programming solver to solve this problem.